The meme that every item is a hunter item has been a meme throughout WoW history, and for the most part, it's been a bit of an exaggeration, even if you yourself may have been a victim of losing Ashkandi to a hunter in the past. But in Season of Discovery, the meme of every item being a hunter item is more true than ever. Not only has the emergence of Melee Hunter turned every weapon and strength item in the game into a hunter item, but this new build that is currently simming the highest DPS out of all range specs will make sure that you don't ever get invited to a group again. That spec is the Spell Power Hunter. In this video, we'll be going over why it works, what build to use, what gear to use, how to press your spells, and in what situation we could consider playing it. Let's get one thing out of the way. Spell Power Hunter is not a new thing and is not exclusive to Season of Discovery. It was something bored hunters would do during Classic when they felt the guild mages and warlocks were having too good of a time. Hunters have in their toolkits three things that scale with spell power. First is Arcane Shot. Arcane Shot has a base spell power scaling of 43.5%, meaning that every one spell power adds 0.435 damage. Further, Arcane Shot has a crit scaling of 200%, and with 5 out of 5 in Mortal Shots, getting a crit with Arcane Shot will hit for way more than you think. The second spell with spell power scaling is Serpent Sting. This is part of what makes Spell Power Hunter viable, since it has a 1 to 1 spell power coefficient, meaning that each spell power adds 1 damage to the spell. Keep in mind that the scaling is for the entire duration of the dot and not for each individual tick. There are a few things we can do with Serpent Sting to boost its damage further than the normal spell power scaling, but we'll talk more about that later. Third spell is Volley, which has a spell power scaling of 33%. Volley is unfortunately a very bad spell, but in situations where you have a ton of mobs, like the packs before Crab Humbler, it could absolutely be worth using once you have enough spell power. But with Season of Discovery, we were given a fourth spell that benefits from spell power, and that is Chimera Shot. While the ability itself doesn't scale with spell power, the secondary effect which adds damage based on Serpent Sting scales based on the inherent Serpent Sting scaling. With the recent buffs to Chimera Shot, it now instantly deals 120% weapon damage and 48% of your Serpent Sting damage, while also resetting the duration of Serpent Sting. This last detail is more important than you think. Not only does it save you from using a global, having to reapply Serpent Sting all the time, but it also means that you can snapshot your very first Serpent Sting and keep it up for the entirety of the fight. That means you can bribe your guild disc priest to use power infusion on you on pool for 20% more damage, then use intellect leatherworking gloves from phase 1 for an additional 10% damage, and then use serpent sting. And then you can keep that added damage from that very first serpent sting up for the entire fight. In a vacuum, spell power still offers less value than agility would, but there are a few forces that conspire to make it perform so well. With the majority of the bosses in Nomer having increased armor values, all of the above mentioned skills absolutely shreds through armor. Further, we have access to 20% increased nature damage through balanced druids and enhanced shamans, as well as the effect from the epic fist weapon, both benefiting spell power hunters incredibly well. When it comes to the build, we'll use a setup that's very similar to the current go-to marksmanship build with a few minor adjustments. You'll want to go with Lone Wolf on chest, Chimera Shot on Gloves, Exposed Weakness on Belt, Sniper Training on Legs, and Trap Launcher on Feet. The build heavily relies on you being able to go Lone Wolf. It's of course viable if you're the one who has to provide Aspect of the Lion, but then you'll be better off rocking a full attack power build. So make sure to take care of bribing whoever you need to bribe to make sure that someone else brings that buff. For our talents, we run 5 out of 5 efficiency, 5 out of 5 lethal shots, we pick up aim shot, because even if we only use one aim shot that we can precast before pull, it's still better value than any other option. Then we go 4 out of 5 in improved arcane shot, we go 5 out of 5 mortal shots, 2 out of 5 improved serpent sting, 3 out of 3 barrage, 5 out of 5 ranged web spec, as well as true shot aura. You may wonder why we only put 2 out of 5 into improved serpent sting, since so much of our scaling is based on that spell. And it's not because it's a bad talent, rather, the rest of the talent tree is just too good. 
When it comes to gearing, here is a complete overview of what to go for as well as enchants worth picking up. As you can notice right off the bat, we still use quite a few non-spell power items. For most of the items, the spell power alternatives are very close, with the exception of helmet and shoulders. So if you want to piss off your guild casters real hard without sacrificing too much DPS, go right ahead. We pick up the cloth 3 set, and despite some of the pieces actively reducing our agility, it still comes out on top over the other options. We pick up Miniaturized Combustion Chamber and Invoker's Void Pearl for our trinkets. So if you already have the attack power version, get ready to drop AD gold to switch the spell power version. We run a few phase 1 items, like the Dagger of Willing Sacrifice and the Void Touch Leather Gauntlets from Leatherworking due to that initial snapshot. When the gloves are on cooldown, we swap to Machinist Gloves for Mechanical Bosses. We of course want to swipe the Glimmering Gizmo Blade as it's biz regardless of what spec you're playing. And for our off pieces, we pick up spell power and hit options. When it comes to our rotation, we'll want to open with using our leatherworking gloves into pre-casting aim shot on pull while getting power infusion from the priest. Then press Serpent Sting, Chimera Shot, Multi Shot, Emulation Trap if you didn't drop it before the fight, and then Arcane Shot. At this point, it's simply a case of prioritizing Chimera Shot over Multi Shot over Arcane Shot while making sure Emulation Trap is up at all times. I can't stress enough how important prioritizing Chimera Shot is over everything else and to never let it be off cooldown. Plan your position in advance so that you can maximize your uptime on sniper training. So when do we use this build? Well, honestly, anytime you have someone else bringing Aspect of the Lion. But if you're planning on rolling on spell power gear, make sure that's clear before the run as not everyone will be as informed about the game as you are. Spell power is simply just better than attack power for hunters currently in the game. And as such, you should always aim to use it whenever you have the opportunity to run Lone Wolf. For consumables, we'll use our usual suspects. Namely, Lesser Wizard Oil on both weapons, Lesser Arcane Elixir, Elixir of Agility, and Sagefish Delight for our food buff. If you want to sweat a bit extra, you can drop whatever profession you have that isn't that working and go enchanting to get the Sigil buff. It scales extremely well for hunters and corresponds to a 21 DPS game. To conclude, Spellpower Hunter is absolutely not a meme. And if Chimera Shot isn't changed, it's here to stay. And hey, thank you so much to everyone who subscribed over the last month or so. We recently reached 1,000 subscribers, and if you're one of those who haven't subscribed yet, but get value from what I do, then uh, now's the time. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.